Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited for what we have for you guys today. I went down to one of my favorite places in Southern Illinois to a little place called Hog Hollow Winery in Golconda, Illinois. First, let's check out a video that I made for them for, for my friends um, that I've got to meet uh, since moving down here who own this place. Um, and then I got to do a little bit of an interview with him as well afterwards. So uh, stick tight and check this out. It's worth a watch. Thanks guys. guys so know me this guy you might not know some of you might know if you're in the Golconda Illinois area this is Steve Hogg of Hog Hollow Winery um, Steve if you can kind of tell us a little bit about your winery kind of what separates it from um, other wineries in the area um, kind of what what's what's your favorite wine that's a lot of questions to throw at you all at once man yeah, it is <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have a lot of people ask about what got us going and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I started making wine back when I was 18. Um, we were down visiting from Indiana and I met uh, a lady named uh, Kay Bennett. Kay uh, Bennett. Yeah, a lady named Kay Bennett was out picking up some native plums. And I stopped and helped her and she taught me how to make wine. Awesome. So over the years we made wine out of a little bit of everything. It's like, well, let's take a chance. You know, if you're investing money in gold, you're better off to invest it in dirt because they don't make any more dirt and they're finding new gold all the time. We meet some of the coolest people from all over the world come in here. They come to the Shawnee Forest. They go to the Garden of the Gods, of course. Of course. And then uh, they type in wineries near me and we're it. That's, so, I think that's how I found you. I think yeah. I went to Bell Smith Springs the mm -hmm. first time and was looking for a place to get a refreshment and you guys popped up first. Yeah. So it's beautiful. I'm gonna show you guys some of the property here, show you some of the insides and outsides of this place, uh, some of the wines that they have to offer. And I think we had talked about, it. I think I had kind of strong arm, you twisted your arm into letting us try your favorite wine here. Mm -hmm. is, is that right? Probably. All right, <laughs> all right. All right, Steven, well, we're, we're here in front of the wines. I gotta know, the people wanna know, what's your favorite? My favorite would be the dry red. Dry like red. Vintner's Choice. It's a blend that we made up. It's a it's a mix between Norton and Chamberson, which are two varieties of grape. Um, if you're drinking white wine and you think you're drinking it for your health, it might be for your mental health, but it's not doing much for your heart and your cardiovascular. Um, you heard it here first. Drink red wine. Yeah. But drink both. I mean, obviously drink both here. Yeah, <laughs> If you're gonna do it for health, do, yeah. do the red wine. This here is our Vintner's Choice. This here was uh, it actually come out of the vineyard in uh, 2018. All right, so is it, is it customary? Can we go like this and then cheers? And then is it is that against any like wine customs that I'm not aware of? Oh no, that's what the wine snobs here. Okay, to. so you you do you do this first. You, you swirl it to let the smell loose, and then you bring it up and sniff it. And that tells you the the bouquet, so they call it. So do we cheers before the sniff or after the sniff? Uh, after. After the sniff, yeah. Okay. Your cheers is right before you. Are we, are we doing this? Let's do this. So it's yeah. the twirl. The twirl. The sniff. sniff. One mm -hmm. day. That is good. I do like a good dry red. Sweet. Which one is this again now? This is the Vintner's Choice. The Vintner's Choice. All right, and that is the one sitting here. Yes, sir. All right. If you see this around town check this guy out well let's let's take a look at the process let's take a look at the press and stuff like that and then we can take a look at kind of the picking process as well okay. too and then 
Um, it's a, it's actually picking season, so we may get to put uh, some picking shears in that, his hand. That, that's fine with me. <laughs> I, I like learning a new trade. We could turn this into a how-to video there real you quick. Go. But what our crusher did was it crushed and it and it separated the majority of the seeds. So what we've got here is we've got the juice, we've got the, the pulp, the skins, and the seeds. This here is, this is our press, and this one here, it's called, it's called a bladder press. What we do is we take the, the pulp that you just seen inside and we'll dump it down in here. And as it fills up with water, it will, it will compress the pulp and all the, uh, the juice will then run out of these cracks and down and then it gets caught in a barrel or a container and then we put it from there right into the blue barrels that you've seen inside awesome awesome and as i just showed right there in the video uh don't let steve fool you he crushes all of his grapes by foot um, <laughs> the, the reason i am barefoot is so you can see yourself that i don't have purple toes he doesn't there, there's my evidence and no i don't put my feet in it you saw it here first <laughs> you saw it here first those are the cleanest toes in, in southern illinois <laughs> What we've got here is this is our crush, crusher, and we're crushing right into the, the container that it will be fermenting in. Right. If, if you want to see, see what it does, well, it's going to be pretty noisy, but I can turn it on and we'll just show you how, how the crusher actually works. Let her rip. All right. What we're doing today is we're out here picking the Norton and uh, we use these really cool little scissors they are made by the same people that make your Swiss Army knives. So with these you can reach in here and you can pick your fruit and it'll hang on to it and then you can just bring it over here and just drop it right into the container. Um, when it comes to harvest time we've got a few people that are nice enough to come out here and help us out and they don't realize how much we do appreciate them to be out here. So, now, and I'm, I'm starting to notice a, a theme here, Stephen. Is it a requirement to work here to be barefoot? Is that a... <laughs> it's, it's not a requirement, but we, we don't have that uh, no shirt, no shoes sign on the door. It'll yeah, it's almost a requirement, no shoes here. <laughs> I don't see. It's just a whole lot more comfortable without them. <laughs>